So, so they hate Joseph because A, he keeps the commandments, and B, he has the spirit of prophecy. And, and they're like, what, wait, you said what's going to happen? That will never happen. Now, now, Joseph loves his brothers, but his brothers don't like him. You know, you're the new kid on the block. We don't like you, you commandment keeper. Oh, you have the spirit of prophecy. <laughs> Who do you think you are? And so the Bible says they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So, so the father, the father sends Joseph to check on his brothers. His brothers are supposed to be, they are supposed to be feeding the flock. But when Joseph gets there, he finds that they're not being responsible. You guys look excited about something. I'm, I'm just telling you a story. I'm wondering, everybody's like, mm, 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 mm. Everybody's just excited. <laughs> yeah, and so, and so, and so what they do is that when Joseph comes, they, 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 they take him and they cast him into this pit. And, and the Bible says that they sat down to eat bread. So check this out. They're eating bread while hating the younger brother. They are eating the father's bread. While despising the new kid on the block. And so what do they do? They, they, they sell him into slavery. And then they say, yeah, let us see what will become of his dreams now. <laughs> let us see what will become of his prophecies. It's a striking similarity in case you didn't get it. <laughs> because you see, beloved, God brought a movement upon the scene at the very end of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know, did you know that you are Joseph? You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are Joseph. I am Joseph. God has called us to be Joseph. Why? Because he needs us to go check on our brothers from another mother. And I understand because our brothers from another mother hate, hate Joseph. God's people, why? Because they keep the commandments of God and they have the spirit of prophecy. <laughs> wow. Wow. So they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dream. What? Oh, what's going to happen in the future? Psh, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not going to happen. That'll never happen. And they sell Joseph. Yeah, you're not one of us. Get away. You're not, a, you're not Christians. You're Christians? Psst. You have no connection with the Father? You're not one of us? And they, they shove him aside. They push him aside. And you can wonder, you can imagine how Joseph must have felt being rejected by his brothers. Have you ever been converted into the truth and got so excited you want to go tell everybody about what you just learned? And especially, you know, your, your family and your friends who, who you know, man, when they hear this thing, oh, they're going to be on fire. And then you take it to them and they're like, uh, no. No. <laughs> And I'm tired of you talking to me about this. And if you don't stop talking to me about this, I will cast you into a pit. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, man, I'm just trying to let you. And, and so, and so they, 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 they get rid of him. They get rid of him. And so, listen, when Joseph goes down to Egypt, you know what happens, right? I mean, just all kinds of bad things. Uh, he gets put into this situation where he's got to overcome. But listen, beloved, the Bible says, thinking not strange concerning the fiery things which are, which are to try you. Right? As though some strange thing happened to you because God was training Joseph for something. But in order for Joseph to be ready, Joseph had to know how to overcome. So number one, Joseph had to know how to overcome. Number two, check this out. So Pharaoh has this dream, and in the dream, he sees seven years of plenty, 
He doesn't know this yet, but, you know, he sees the seven, you know, kind and then the seven uh, good, good uh, grains of air swallowed by the seven bad. And then he needs someone to interpret the dream, the dream. And so Joseph comes and Joseph interprets the dream. And Joseph tells him, this is what you must do. Because then what do we do? He says, this is what you must do. Why? Because a famine is coming. And so we've got to store up bread. <laughs> <laughs> a famine is coming so we've got to store our bread so, so God used Joseph for something he was not even aware of himself you see because God loved those brothers you know how many how many loaves of bread on the table 12 representing the 12 tribes the mount of the congregation. Satan was after the congregation even back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys obey my word over God's word. So God says, I'm going to use Joseph. I say, so you know what Joseph starts to do? Joseph starts to gather bread. Amen. <laughs> He is gathering bread because a famine is coming. And he knows that in that time of famine, people are going to be pleading, begging for bread, and he's going to be ready. <laughs> he knows a time of trouble is coming. And so he knows, okay, God told me, start, stack, start storing bread. Why? Not for yourself, Joseph, but for others. For who? What others? Oh, for the very ones that hated you and despised you and spit on you and, and sold you. Those. I want you to save up bread for those. Amen. Beloved, I got a question for you today. Are you storing bread? Okay. <laughs> You see, beloved, God has not just called you so that you can be saved. He's called you because he loves. Amen. No, he so loves the world. Amen. And so he's saying, listen, I need someone to start storing bread. Why? Because a famine is coming. Not of bread, nor of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And, and in that time, when, when Satan comes and appears, that time of trouble in which this, this overmastering miracle delusion is going to take place, uh, people, if they're going to be ready to overcome this miracle, they must have bread. The lamp is the word of God. If they don't have the bread... They are going to succumb to this overmastering delusion. Therefore, my people, my people, I need you to be studying your Bibles. Amen. No, 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 not amen. <laughs> no, 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 people. Not just studying your Bibles. Oh, yeah, I study. No, I need you to start truly gathering bread, knowing that you're gathering it, not just so that you can fulfill your, oh, I studied my Bible today, but you're gathering bread because you know that the salvation of others depends on it. It's, it's no longer good enough to say, oh, I let my pastor gather bread for me. Oh, I let this one gather bread. No, God is calling you as a Joseph to gather bread. Why? Because in that time, people are going to be coming to you. Listen, if you don't have the word of God, if the word of God is not, if you're not firmly standing on the word of God, you will be overcome by the overmastering delusion. So the devil doesn't want you gathering bread. He doesn't want you gathering bread. How do you gather bread? The same way God told the children of Israel in the Old Testament. I'm going to rain manna down from heaven for you. <laughs> Six days I'm going to rain manna down. And on the seventh day, I'm not going to rain any. Wow, we have it backward. Because <laughs> we don't look for any manna on, in, during the six days. We just come to church on Sabbath expecting manna. <laughs> so 
we're not gathering bread. Many of us come to church on Sabbath. Oh, I wasn't fed. <laughs> what did you do during the week? <laughs> God wants us to learn how to gather bread, how to gather manna, because it is imperative. There is a time of famine coming, a time of trouble. And beloved, listen to me. If the Bible says, if it were possible, even the very elect should be deceived. Listen, listen. I don't know if you catch this. When Jesus comes again, what else attends his second coming? What else happens? What's he coming to do? He's coming to raise the dead. So the scenario of the second coming would include someone coming out of the sky and dead people living. So if Satan is going to try to counterfeit this as best he can, guess what else is going to happen? Demons. I mean, imagine, I'm not just talking about, oh, one demon here. No. I'm talking about all of a sudden you, you've moved from, uh, you know, reality and, you know, to almost like this supernatural existence on earth right at this point in time. Spiritualism. This threefold union. Apostate Protestantism, the papacy, and spiritualism. And beloved, when this thing happens on a global scale, and for the atheist, seeing is believing. Do you see how this is the only thing? Listen, nothing any living human being can say right now on this earth is going to bring all these different religious factions and non-religious factions and radical factions together, that's not going to happen. It will take a miracle. And beloved, listen, this miracle is going to be so overwhelming that if you're not firmly standing on the table of showbread, the word of God, the Bible says even the very elect would be deceived. You are Joseph. Nobody can gather bread like you. <laughs> huh? No one can gather bread. Because listen, there's a time coming where you will not be able to gather bread. And the five foolish virgins enter that time unprepared. You don't train for a marathon the day of the marathon. You train for a marathon way before the marathon hits. God has given us his word, especially us at the end of time. He's saying, listen, you are my Joseph. And I've got brothers out there who are going to come and say, hey, remember that bread you were talking about? Remember that prophecy? <laughs> the prophecy that they thought would never happen. I'll never bow down to him. Guess what? It came to pass. Imagine Joseph in his time, he's in prison. He's like, how in the world is the word of God going to come to pass like this? How, how? Beloved, do you look at, to, do you look at your, you know, at to, your, we've been saying this forever. You know, is Christ really going to come? I'm telling you, the prophecy will come to pass. The prophecy will come to pass. And the question is, will you be ready? Will you be preparing bread while not certain? Oh, I don't know. Will it, will it happen in my lifetime? Will it happen after my life? When will it happen? I don't know, but I'm going to start gathering bread. Amen. Because when the brothers come to Joseph, he weeps. The Bible says, if your enemies hunger. We are gathering bread for our enemies. That's the heart of Jesus. He died while we were yet his enemies. That we might have the bread of life. That's my appeal to you. You are Joseph. Gather bread while you have the chance. Not for yourself, but for the world. Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to us again. Bless us, Lord, as we go forth gathering bread. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.